Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch Circle. I just love drinking coffee in my Believe Mug. It makes me feel all warm and ready for a good Squatch story. If you'd like to get any products shown, please see links in description below. Report number 62405, Class Bravo. State, Kansas. County, Cherokee County. Observed. This happened about 25 years ago, but I will remember it forever. I live in southeast Kansas. My husband and I were driving around looking for a fishing spot. We went down a dirt road to a strip pit from strip mining coal. I was ahead of Michael and I was being very quiet. Michael was behind me and I could hear him walking through the weeds. I came to a small break in the brush with a game trail on it and I followed it. I walked about 20 feet and came out into a small clearing. I was looking straight ahead at the water and from behind and higher up in the air a screeching, screaming sound started. It was so loud that I crouched down and covered my ears and I had my eyes closed. The scream would go for a few seconds and then it would pause and suck in some more air and scream again. This went on for several seconds. I finally could tell that the thing was running away and I stood up and opened my eyes. When I looked up, the thing had jumped the creek in front of me about 10 feet and was running through the trees and was knocking the small trees aside as he ran away screaming the whole time. I know that I scared it when I stepped out into the clearing. I wasn't looking in that direction, so I didn't see it standing there. It heard Michael behind me, but I was being very quiet. When I stepped out into the clearing, I scared it. Michael heard it screaming and started yelling for me. That's when I stood up and looked and saw all the trees being knocked around as it ran past them. It was the loudest animal I have ever heard. I might have saved my own life when I crouched down and covered my ears. The sound was a bit behind me and up in the air about seven feet. It wasn't a bear or bird or anything else I could think of. It was a Sasquatch. Many people have seen them here. We have a lot of wilderness and strip pits for them to hide and live in. I could have lost my life if it had wanted to hurt me, but I scared it so bad all it did was scream and run away. Also noticed, we were going to go back, but it rained and washed away any prints. Other witnesses, my husband was witness. Other stories, Michael saw one about eight years ago at a bridge about two miles from my house. Time and conditions, daytime, clear day. Environment, it was a heavily wooded area around a strip pit, one mile from Big Brutus, southeast Kansas. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Carter Bouchart. I spoke with a witness. She remembered it like it was yesterday. She is a self-described, no-nonsense woman, not a girly girl, nor subject to a wild or vivid imagination. She said she's not a person who scares easily. She did say she was not real good with dates of event, or so we settled on mid-June 1995, though it could have been a couple of years either side of that date. It's close enough for the purpose of this report. As stated, she and her husband, Michael, were on their way to fish one of their favorite spots. The location was very near Big Brutus, which is a giant earth-moving machine that is now out of service and used as a tourist attraction. The majority of the area between Cherokee and West Mineral, Kansas is dotted with abandoned large pit mines or pit strips. The state has filled many hazardous ones in, but many others have been stocked and or maintained by the state. The area is also home to numerous swamps and conservation areas, and according to her, there are a lot of folks who have seen and or heard things in the area. As she was walking, she estimated she was about 50 feet ahead of Michael. 
As she approached the creek, she was walking very quietly so as not to scare off the fish. She was actually stopped so she could listen for the creek, and she could hear Michael still walking towards her. She popped into the clearing mentioned and was looking at the creek at this point, when something higher up in the air than where she was let out a long, higher-pitched scream. It was just behind her, just a few feet. It was at this point she ducked down and plugged her ears with her fingers. She estimates the screams lasted three to five seconds each, and as soon as the scream stopped, it sucked in a massive amount of air and screamed again. She estimates it screamed four to five times, and she heard the creature sucking in more air each time before screaming again. She was too terrorized to look up. She had no idea what, if anything, it would do to her. After about the fifth scream, she heard it take off running towards the creek. That is when she finally stood up and looked around. She estimated she was about eight feet from the creek at that point. She heard it running towards the creek and heard the steps as it ran, and could hear a grunt as it jumped the creek. It cleared the creek in one jump. The creek was about ten feet wide at that spot. At that point, Michael had caught up to her, and they watched as the creature crashed through the brush and knocking down trees on the other side of the creek. Watching the trees and brush moving as it plowed through, it was gone in five to six seconds. The scream was blood-curdling and incredibly loud. When she got to the area where the screaming started, she was looking to the left at the creek, and whatever creature was screaming at her was to her right and slightly behind her. When the screaming started, she hit the ground in a ball, stuck her fingers in her ears, and waited to get eaten. For good reason, she never looked around. She is only five foot one in height, and her estimate of the height or area of the scream to be between seven to eight feet in the air. As we spoke, she surmised, and I agreed, that it is likely she walked right up on a creature that must have been laying or crouched down and just startled it. It might have been as scared of her as she was of it. It could also have been listening to her husband approach as he was walking kind of noisily. Her husband had come running from where he was when the screaming started towards the brush where the trail was the one where she had been standing until she ducked down. He heard the screaming, but couldn't see her because she had dropped to the ground. He was yelling for her, but she did not answer him because this thing, whatever it was, was still right beside her and had not started to run off yet. He actually thought she had been killed or eaten for a brief moment. They loaded up the car and headed home. She was not been back to that spot unless in the company of numerous friends in all the years since. As mentioned earlier, many if not all of the abandoned strip mines or pits are managed by the state of Kansas Wildlife Management Department. There's plenty of deer, fish, and productive farmland. There are numerous tales by the locals of sightings and sounds associated with Sasquatches. Her husband had seen one about eight years before near their home. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go.